Hello folks and welcome back. In this tutorial I'm going to give you a guide to setting up your Canon DSLR for movie shooting. The first step is to turn the camera on to movie shooting mode. Then adjust the dial to manual. This will give you much more flexibility when it comes to focusing, depth of field and adjusting the camera for different light conditions. When you've done that, set the focus to manual here and you'll find this on the side of the lens itself. Pressing the menu button here will open up the camera's settings. Press on this tab here Go to Clear Settings and select Clear All Camera Settings. Click on OK and this will reset the camera and clear any settings the previous person had set when they were shooting. Press Menu once more to take you back to the main menu. If the memory card has been used in another camera or has footage on it that you don't want, click on this tab. Select Format Card, click on OK, and the camera will format the memory card and wipe any footage that was already on there. If, however, there's footage on the memory card you want to keep, don't perform this step. Next, select the Movie Recording tab here, select Movie Record Size, and set the size to 1920 by 1080 at 24 frames a second. This will give your film the movie look that you're after. Then press Set OK. If at any point you see this warning come up, press the record button here to take you back to the monitor screen. If you're now happy with your settings, press Menu again to take you to the live monitor. Pressing the info button here will show you how you're manipulating your settings as you set up your camera for a shot. This can be turned off when you're more comfortable with the camera settings yourself. However, in the early stages when you're getting to grips with them, it's worth leaving it on so that you know the settings that you're manipulating. When setting up your DSLR for a shot, there are three different settings in addition to general focusing that you need to consider. And they are the ISO, the aperture and the shutter speed. You've also got an indicator here that will tell you to what extent your image is under or overexposed. Let's deal with each of these settings in turn and discuss what they mean. The ISO adjusts the sensitivity of the image sensor in the camera. If you've got plenty of light, you need to set this fairly low, or make it less sensitive, in order to get a good image. However, if you set it high under these conditions, it will overexpose the image and bleach it out. In this image here, I've set the ISO to 100, which gives me a nice balanced exposure. 200 lets in more light, 400 even more, and by the time we reach 800, the image is very overexposed. In darker conditions, of course, you'll need to let in more light. 400 ISO here isn't enough. 800 improves things a bit, and 1600 helps us get the amount of light we really need. However, the downside of this is that the image will start to get increasingly grainy. For very dark nighttime shooting, additional, more powerful lenses would need to be purchased in order to get a good image. The aperture adjusts the size of the opening through which light is allowed onto the image sensor. It is measured in what are known as f stops. It will, of course, affect the amount of light again. 
but in this instance you might want to use it for creating a shallow or deep focus depending on your filming needs. To keep it brief you can set a wide aperture of 3.5 to create a shallow depth of field like this. Or you can set a narrow aperture of 11 to assist you in creating a deeper focus image where everything is clear from foreground to background. Earlier we set the camera to record at 24 frames a second when we went into the movie record settings. This means that in the space of one second the DSLR has captured 24 different digital frames of information. The shutter on your DSLR will open and close a certain amount of times per second in order to capture those 24 frames. The camera will always capture 24 frames per second as that's what we told it to do earlier. However, you can adjust the shutter speed to dictate how it captures those 24 frames. Let's see how it works. If you set a slow shutter speed, say 30 per second, then the shutter will open and close 30 times in one second. This will create a blurry look to your moving images, more commonly known as motion blur, like so. However, if you set a faster shutter speed, say to 100 per second, then the shutter will open and close 100 times per second. This will create a slightly jerky staccato effect, like so. This will be useful if you want to record something that requires a lot of movement, like sports or an action scene. You'll realise pretty quickly again though that this affects the brightness of the image, so you'll also need once again to readjust the aperture and ISO settings. You'll soon learn that adjusting all three of the settings, the shutter speed, the aperture and the ISO, is very necessary when it comes to capturing the perfect image that you're after. If however you want a generally natural looking image, which most of you probably do, then the rule of thumb is to set the shutter speed to approximately double the frame rate. If you remember, at the start of the tutorial we set the frame rate to 24 frames per second. Therefore, we should set a shutter speed of around double that. In this case, we'll go for 50. This will replicate the motion blur that we see naturally with our own eyes when there's movement in an image. Now that you've set your camera up for movie shooting, you can adjust your focus on the lens like so. Once you're happy that your image is in focus and it's got the correct exposure, then all you need to do is press record and you're good to go. Okay folks, hope you found that useful. Good luck with your shooting.